Um, guys, so great to have the opportunity to Zoom meet you. Uh, how's it all going? Like, how have you guys been in the last eight months or so? Well, fortunately, Good. we've had Fat Man to keep us occupied. Exactly. So that's been a blessing. Yeah, that's yes. been huge. So, and you know, that troubling times editing and doing post over the last, you know, six months has been a wonderful distraction. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Definitely. Uh, you know, makes your days go a little bit faster. Well, congratulations on the film. Uh, it's great. I had a fun time watching it and oh, thank I, you. you're welcome. I understand this is what, like something like 14 years in the making. Like, yeah. were you guys kind of like pissed off as kids that you got a real crappy gift and then decided you were going to make this movie? <laughs> Uh, so we, we have no deep seated trauma for Christmas. The Nelms family went really hard at Christmas. As hard as that is to believe <laughs> by that movie. <laughs> but one thing we will say is that it was a bit of a, a feast and famine. So over the, the course of the year, there weren't a lot of splurges. You know, if it's summertime, you need a new pair of shorts. It's like, hey, Christmas is coming. You know, <laughs> but when Christmas arrived, there was a haul to be had for sure. I'm sure. They made up for, you know, three years of anything. It was the, every year had, I mean, the tree was just packed, bulging. I, I don't know if mom and dad had been, you know, storing everything in a, in a, in a closet somewhere that we didn't notice, but it was, it was all, it was incredible. We always got a nice haul at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's great. You know, listen, the odd pair of socks and shorts, we all get that, you know, no matter what, it doesn't yeah. really matter. And, and they come in handy. You have to, at the time when you're a kid and you get that kind of stuff, you're like, mm, you know, but later as you get older, yeah, send the underwear, you know, for no, sure. Exactly. Right? I need <laughs> socks. I need. We all get so boringly practical as we get older. Exactly. So, where did this idea come from? Like, who who wants to start here? <laughs> so, I guess for us, <laughs> look, we 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 had seen you know Santa, you know, uh, wonderfully portrayed by Tim Allen and his sort of more family friendly version. Sure. We'd seen Santa, the sociopath that came down your chimney and hacked you up. And for us, we feel it really felt the genre that was a space for something like this. You know, a very grounded take yeah. on a fantastical character. Yeah. So how did the idea of Mel Gibson come to mind? Like, is it the kind of thing where you, as you were writing, you were thinking, hmm, Mel Gibson would be perfect in this role. <laughs> well, look, like we said, like we, we wrote this script many, many years ago, four to over 14 years ago. Yeah. Throughout the years, we had, we had revised it every year, taken a pass on it and honed the material. We came upon Gibson at a screening of Hacksaw Ridge in 2017. Right. He's sitting there doing the Q&A. He's got this beautiful, bushy beard. He's got the weight of the production on his shoulders. And he looks like a man carrying a burden. Right. And he and I are sitting there listening to him doing this Q&A. And we just turned to each other. And we said, man, that's our Chris. That's, that's, that's Chris Kringle in, in this universe. Yeah, you could, he was right in the middle of that awards campaign for Hacksaw Ridge. So, I mean, he was, you know, obviously, uh, it, had been, it had been months. Um, so he was on a slog and he was, you know, worn down worn down from it and he just had that kind of you know but he was very passionate and we were just like man that's the guy that's the guy um so what was his reaction like when, oh yeah yeah so, the script. so so we were we, we were trying to put the movie together and not only with casting but with financing with financing producers, producers. all kind of happening at the same time so it was yeah. all kind of swirling and we were answering emails like oh yeah hey great put a meeting together and then it was we got this email that said hey I, I really enjoyed the script. I think it's really funny. I'd love to have it sit down for a chin wag. And we're like, okay. Well, what's a chin wag? And there was no sign off. Then the email was just a, you know, a, a pseudonym or a name. And I, it wasn't it was like Mel dude 25. Yeah. It wasn't anything. It wasn't anything like that. Right. We're like, who yeah. there was no, there was no giveaway. So I was like, okay. So I, so I just write about, hey, great, because I'd been answering these emails for weeks. And I was just like, hey, great, you know, we're excited to sit down with you to talk about what, you know, the film. Uh, like, who am I speaking with? And it's like, hey, this is Mel. And I went, uh, oh, my God, you know, like, awesome. Like, so we're like, let's sit down for this chin wag. Like, where do we do that? So we met at a coffee shop. It was supposed to be like 45 minute conversation, you know, like get in and honestly it turned into three and a half hours. Wow. We were talking about his movies. We're talking about Fat Man. Like it was the whole spectrum. And it was, it comes down to this kind of penultimate moment when he starts talking about uh, the script. He says, hey, you know, that scene where I'm looking out over the elves, I really feel like I should be, and I have to tell them we have to do this military contract. Like I really feel like I want to be like at a point where I'm about ready to cry because it's such a horrible yeah. thing. Tell him, and we're like, yes, yes. And he goes, and that's what's going to be so funny about it. And we're like, exactly. <laughs> like he got right away the layers we were playing with and the very grounded approach we were going to we were going to have with it, uh, because we wanted to really get you into uh, Chris, the human being, first right. for 20, 30 minutes before we started introducing the more fantastical elements. Because most of these, most Santa movies, you know, you're 
you land in there and he's, you know, he's, he's, he's just yucking, jolly, it up with the L. yucking it up <laughs> and you're just instantly like, Oh, I don't have to care about this. This is nonsense. You know? So we had a, we had definitely had a commentary and some themes we were playing with that we wanted to hopefully hit home. And I think yeah. that if you don't seed or root your character or film in a grounded world that there are no stakes, it's a lot easier to excuse all that and not deal with it, you know? Oh, for so, sure. So we wanted to we wanted to hit that off right off the bat of like, hey, this is our reality, this is our character, this is his plight, mm -hmm. and then yeah, oh yeah, he's got this and he's got this and he's got that and he's got this and and then start in introducing the uh, fantastical elements so, so that you had a very grounded intro and you were sort of sucked in. Absolutely, and what I find interesting too, I mean, look, you know, Academy Award winner a couple times and all this and yeah. after, but he's he is a director. So was he hands off as the director or or did you? Did you allow him to say, hey, Mel, you know, you have this idea. Like, how did that all work out? So obviously, look, we, we didn't know how that dynamic was going to work, right? He is so accomplished. Yeah. Uh, we came in there and he honestly, from the beginning, was the ultimate collaborator. He didn't force anything upon us. He would throw out ideas and we sure. welcomed those ideas. But it was always prefaced with, hey, you know, do this if you want. Here's an idea. Take it or leave it. Which obviously makes you more open as a collaborator because he's like, you don't have to take any of this. Like, just throw it out the window. I'm on board with what we're doing. We're like, okay, great. And he's like, but what do you think of this? You know, or whatever, if you ever had a suggestion. And yeah, I, and it was, and they were usually great ideas because he's a great creative guy. So we're like, all right, yeah, well, how do we work that in? Or okay, great. Yeah, improv that line. That sounds fun. You know, that sounds cool. That's a great way yeah. to type in or whatever. So, and, and also like we were, we were mining him. We were yeah. provoking the stuff. I mean, we were sitting there having us like tell us about, uh, you know, Braveheart and all this stuff. He's like, oh, Ridge, Apocalypto. Of course, was, of course. I yeah. was double printing frames on Braveheart for emphasis. And I double printed frames in Fat Man. We're not going to let- That's a great idea. Yeah, that's we're exactly. not going to let Mel no Gibson, the <laughs> cinematic, you know, director yeah. resource like go to waste for sure yeah, pumping yeah. Con constantly pumping it for information i'm sure and what i love about this is it's such an eclectic cast like it, everybody's so good in it and it's so from different areas of you know from everywhere i love it i want to start talking um first off with about chance hurst field mm -hmm. because yeah. um as you know i spoke to him this morning first of all he's like so wise beyond his years he's fantastic um and we're so proud of him here in canada for what he's doing and he's and he's such a lovely kid but yeah. oh my god as far as i'm concerned he steals this movie he is such a little shit it's amazing no. in this movie like he's so so good as this bad kid and i understand that the audition tape that he sent you you were a bit nervous because he was so good on tape he was so good that's exactly it right we, we had <laughs> searched high and low we were getting uh, audition videos and chances came across us and our desk and we were honestly just blown away we're yeah. like okay Whoa. this kid's phenomenal he's great is he too good like right like what are we going to be dealing with on set is this kid like gonna be like a little tyrant uh, like, right. you know? and uh so so we're like we got to get to know this guy's personality so let's yeah. get a skype call we sit down his dad adam was very nice and set it all up and gets the camera set and chance chance gets in a chair right in front of it and he's like oh hey hey guys we're like oh we're like okay this isn't the kid i thought we were you know like yeah, already it's a he's great already, and then he's like super sweet right and, and then you realize how bright he is like he's like you know incredibly smart he's he, and, and we, he's like hey would you do you guys want me to do anything different we're like because he'd done that he, he did a read for us yeah, right there live great. and we're like amazing he's like you yeah. want any adjustments we're like well. and we're like well 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 hey what if you did this and you know just record it and send it to us later and he's like no no i'll do it right now we're like okay. i'll do it live <laughs> wow <laughs> okay all right so he does this he does it and he's like anything else and we're like well okay now we're yeah. playing and we give him a couple more notes and he turns on a dime pirouettes and lands it and we're just like man like it like i can't tell you how valuable it is not only that he's that talented and that smart and can get the layers and the mm -hmm. nuance that quickly but when we were on set there there are times in independent film when you're like oh shoot i've got an hour to nail this right and it's the kid's scene and if he isn't dialed yeah. a lot of people say don't work with kids and animals it's like tough to get a performance but i yeah, mean no, he, he's Chance really five. good it's not like he's five but i'm just saying you know it, it it is rough sometimes getting a performance out of a kid and man he's so good he's so dialed he's so on point that in an hour he'll knock it out and then some and you're like okay i guess we're going home early today holy cow like amazing and, yeah, yeah. I, I loved him in this movie i thought he was he was fantastic and and just made me laugh so hard being a mom of two boys and and you know thank god my kid my kids grew up okay but wow it just it, it was a good release to watch his character you know and walton goggins like who is one of my favorite actors like you know this guy's a chameleon he can play so nasty and then you watch him in his new sitcom and and he's yeah. he's so 
great and funny and um he he was fantastic too wow you guys really hit the jackpot like marianne jean baptiste like honestly were you pitching yourselves on the set (laughs) <laughs> there, there were many many times where we, we constantly looked at each other and we couldn't we we're like i can't believe we get to make this movie yeah, not I only mean, because of its concept but also the talent the talent people and people we that we were collaborators with. that we had on set with us yeah and i mean walton like he was so fun to work with because he would give you so many options um and not not and i don't mean options as in like you know he's going left and right i mean he's like he's giving you such nuanced options of like, oh, let me turn it up just a, a hair. Let me take yeah. it down just a hair. Let me do something like this. Oh, let me try this. Oh, I got a good one. Let's do it. You know, bear with me. And this might seem like a lot, but let me try this. You know, and a lot of those great moments are in the movie and some of them were a little much and, you know, you'd kind of dial a ride as you were going through the movie, but as we were editing it, but yeah, he's so talented. He's so good. Mm-hmm. But one of the funnest things is uh, when he's doing his character, he, you know, he's so engrossed in the character that he literally kind of has it simmering beneath the surface the entire time you're shooting. Yeah. It's not like you're like, hey, skinny man, you don't have to refer to him as the character. And, you know, it's not a crazy method thing. It's just, he's so engrossed and he sort of has it on a dial. You know what I mean? He's he's like, even when he's taking a little break in between takes, he'll answer you in the skinny man's voice, which is amazing. Yeah, he's he's great. Like I say, such a great cast. So that's I want to ask because there are of course so many great brother director teams, you know, like, and I'm sure you was, you know, you use some of them as mentors, I don't know, but how does it work between the two of you guys? Like, how do you not get in fights? How do you get along? And how do you decide who's going to do what on, on a set? Well, I think, look, as, we, as the years have gone by, we've become more and more dysfunctionally codependent. <laughs> yeah, we, we were, we were, bl- we were blessed that we grew up and, and cursed maybe, but we grew up in a rural environment and yeah. weren't a lot of friends around, weren't a lot of people with distractions. So it was either we got along or we were really lonely. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that like our sort of cinematic tastes fused on those weekends, watching movies and eating donuts. And uh, I think that's how we're able to collaborate in our professional lives. Yeah, it's, it's, he's a great sounding board. Since our, our tastes are similar enough, like we, we can soundboard off of each other and I trust him implicitly. And I think reverse when, yeah. when one of our radars goes off of something's not passing the mustard or something doesn't quite work, then we go, okay, well, let's figure out how to do it. And that's great because the egos aren't involved. There's a shorthand. We have a trust. It's like, well, if he doesn't like it, then I don't like it. You know, and I'm the one that came up with it. So it's like, we got to fix it. We got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. really great on set too, because you know, when we're directing or we're doing something and we get a scene and we're excited, we turn to each other and we go, you do that. I'm good with that. And we're moving on. Moving on. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's great. I, I love this story. I think it's fantastic. Well, I want to wish you guys the best with this film. I, would, I think I it's love- opening uh, here a little bit later. Uh, it's coming okay. out in Canada real soon, but uh, I just want to thank you for your time today. And, um, it's it's so much fun and i i can't wait are you already working on your next next thing oh, we, got, or? We're always, we always got those irons in the fire bonnie good good <laughs> well I'm look a little bit about marianne though i would love to she was so amazing so talented i yeah. remember when we first talked to her like she's such an amazing actress when we first talked to her she's like well what what uh like what 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 uh dialect dialect what where, where do you want me from and we're like yeah well, minneapolis like what am i doing here she's like just give me an address i'm like oh well we actually want you to do your like that British accent that you have. And I, I love t- that. She took a big break and she goes, Ooh, I like that. You know, like, <laughs> okay. I see, it's like, and that was what was so great with her is that she, again, like caught on to the layers we were after so quickly. And just because I think she's just such a talented, experienced, and smart woman. She yeah. was literally, I mean, she was the embodiment of that character. She's, she's so strong and so alpha, but also so nurturing and warm, which is a tough combination to pull off, man. For and sure. She does it yeah. like, nonchalance you know yeah but i'd like to give a, a shout out to all of our canadian collaborators we had yes. a wonderful time shooting out here there. Uh, really really great experience and we can't wait to come back yeah, yeah keep let's keep, keep bringing the work here we we love it but uh, yeah but just to talk quickly about marianne because i i love the fact that she's british i didn't really even think about that and but i do think about how did they hook up? Like, where would they have met? Yeah, yeah. And anyway, but it just makes you, it's more layers to the characters that I, yeah. I loved. I, th- I thought that was a great idea. So yeah, what um, sleigh ride was Chris over the UK, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Listen, congratulations so much. Thank uh, I thank you so much for your time. And it's so much fun to watch this film. And uh, I, I really appreciate you uh, chatting with me today. It was great. Great. Chat. Our pleasure, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. See, you'll see Bye. you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good Chris. weekend. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks.